Hey guys, so it's Friday. It's during my lunch break. It's been a crazy week for me. I've been dealing with a lot personally, but then on top of that, I've been starting at 8 a.m. every day, and then I haven't been finishing my workday until um, 8 p.m. around there most days. So um, I'm exhausted. I was gonna film something for you guys tomorrow on Saturday, an actual like video camera episode about gear. And I think I'll do that next. But for now, since I've had such a crazy week, I think I'm just going to do a longer screen capture episode for you guys. I hope that's okay. So what I wanted to show you guys today is just some track organizational tips, ways that I organize my tracks when I'm starting out with a session, when I'm organizing a session, stuff like that. So I do use templates and a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show you, I do put into my template, but I'm going to go a little bit past what I put into my template because there's some of these things will vary depending on what you're working on. So um, I hope you guys like this video. So I'm just going to create a blank session. Um, you can pick file type. I always pick wave. You can pick sample rate. I talked about sample rate in a video. I talked about bit depth in a video already. So if you want to learn more about that, you can check out those videos. I do like to check interleaved. So I'm just going to create a session here. So when I have a template, I always have a master fader on my template, but this is one of the things I teach my students to do is always create a stereo master fader. And that's just because the master fader sums up everything else in your session. If you send everything out the main outputs and then you set the master fader to look at the main outputs, then you're monitoring everything that you're hearing, right? So. That's a good thing to do. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you guys today is how I organize a whole bunch of tracks within a session. So let's say I have a session. I just hit Command Shift N to create a new track. Let's say my session has like 20 tracks in it. So this might all be audio, right? I'm not gonna bother importing audio right now because I'm just kind of showing you guys the concept here. But let's say this is an existing session that I'm working on that I'm organizing. So what I'll do is let's say these six tracks are all um, let's say they're explosion sounds, or let's say they're all drum tracks, or let's say they're all vocal tracks. What I do is I categorize my tracks based on what type of track they are. And I'm just gonna kind of color code these tracks for a minute here to kind of show you what that might look like. So I'll kind of just organize them by their group, by their category, whatever it is, depends on the project, right? and I will color code them. And then sometimes what I'll do right off the bat, just to be organized, is I'll do Command G while I'm highlighting a group and I'll create an actual track group for them. So let's say this is um, drums. I'll do that. And I'll go all the way down doing that, right? So I'll go Command G, let's say this is um, synth or bass or whatever we want it to be, right? It's all imaginary. So I'll group things, right? So I'll say maybe these are vocals. Maybe I should call those back, backing vocals because uh, maybe then these would be regular vocals. But I'm just going to do this really quick here. It doesn't really matter what they actually are. I'm just showing you guys the concept. So I'm going to get rid of this. Cool. Okay, cool. So now I have these all categorized. I have groups. I can deactivate these groups by making them not highlighted here, but they're there if I want to use them, which is good. That's important. So that's one of the things I do to stay organized. Another thing that I do is once I make these, I will pretty much always by default, I will make aux tracks for each chunk. So what I'll do is I'll go, you know, I'll highlight the last track in the group and I'll go command shift N to create a new track and I'll create two stereo and then aux tracks. And so each chunk of my tracks will have two stereo aux tracks. Woo! And I do that all the way down. So I'll just do it now. Cool. Um, and here I'm just holding command and using the arrow keys to select stereo and then aux track. Cool, and so then the next thing that I'll do right off the bat is part of these aux tracks is I'll say like, let's say these are, what did I decide these were? Drums, I guess. So if these are drums, I might label them all as drums in the comments. A lot of times I save the, I don't bother with this. A lot of times I'll save the comments for notes to myself about, oh, I feel like this sounds too boomy or this sounds whatever, it, you know, whatever I'm feeling like it sounds like. A lot of times I'll put notes to myself in the comments and then I'll take a break from that, whether it's to go mix some other part of the piece or whether that's to then take an actual break and sit in the quiet for a minute. But I will take a break from that thing and then come back to it and look at my notes and be like, huh, do I still think that this thing sounds boomy or this thing sounds whatever it is? So I do use the comments for that. Comments are great for that. So anyway, so let's say these are all drums. I'll then make this be 
drum aux, and then this one will be drum effects. So this works for whatever the category is, you know, if it's vocals, if it's all your explosion sounds, if it's all your uh, footstep sounds, whatever it is. If it's a category of sound and you're splitting that those tracks into one category, then I will almost always by default, I don't always use both of these. I will make a drum aux though and a drum effects or a that category aux and a that category effects track. And so then what I do is I got to hook these all up, right? So what I'll do is I'll highlight these. So I held shift and clicked and then I will hold option and shift. And what I'll do is I will create a send for all of these. So I'm just gonna do best one two for the send. And then while still holding option shift, I'm clicking there. So it's not, the sends aren't at negative infinity. So now if I check, they should all be at zero. Yep, they're all good. So that's good, there's that bus. And then the other thing I'll do is option shift. And I'll go to the main output and I will send them out another bus. So bus three, four. Okay, so now that I have these two outputs here, so basically a send splits the signal and sends it elsewhere, right? It's uh, duplicating the signal really and sending it elsewhere. And then instead of going out the one, two, there these tracks are now going out three and four. And so right now, the way this is, if I hit play and there was audio on here, I would not hear these tracks, right? Because they're going out three and four and nothing is receiving three and four. Nothing that ultimately goes to the main outputs, right? So I wouldn't hear anything here. And then sometimes if I'm feeling like it, I'll go here and do no input while holding option shift. So that's that. And then on this end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the drum aux to take the one that's coming from the output here. So bus three, four, I go to the input panel, bus three, four, and then I will have the drum effects one take whatever the effects track is, not the aux track. I will take the send from, take the send from. That's a logical way to say it. Cool. So so now these are all good. So basically the way my signal flow works is I have the audio that lives on these tracks and that audio is going down through the inserts. It's being duplicated here at the sends and one version is going out to my effects track, my effects aux track. And then the rest of it is going through to bus three and four and through to this other aux track, the main drum aux track, and then it's going out the main outputs. So what I then do is I will hold command and click on these solo buttons for the two aux tracks and that solo saves the tracks. So all that means is if I solo these guys, I don't have to also solo the aux tracks to actually hear these guys, right? Because otherwise I won't hear them because these will get soft muted the way all the other tracks get soft muted when you solo another track, if that makes sense. That's kind of roundabout, but I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. But yeah, so I will solo save my aux tracks. I do that to all my aux tracks and that's just to make it faster so that I don't have to then click on more tracks to solo them. Cool, so then what I do here is I will have the drum aux. I will do things like compression, things that I consider more of like the dry version of the track. And then I'll have the fun effects, weird effects. Sometimes I'll have like fun delays or different things on here that I would then wanna mix in with with whatever the dry mixed version of the tracks are. So usually the aux track is a little bit louder than the effects track, because just by default, I tend to put a little bit less effects than dry signal, right? That's kind of how people tend to operate. But sometimes, you know, if I'm working on a sound effect or something where I want it to be really weird, you know, all the rules are off, so. But yeah, that's basically that. So this is kind of the basic way that I organize my tracks. So my sessions end up looking like this in the end with like a chunk of tracks and then two oxes and then a chunk of tracks and then two oxes. And one of the advantages to doing this, right, is that if you have this chunk of tracks, I could add compression to each or reverb or whatever it is to each and every one of these tracks separately. Or I could just put one instance of the plugin here on the aux. And it does sound a little bit different. The two different ways do sound different. So there are instances when I will put individual inserts on each of these tracks instead of putting it on here. But like, for example, if you want to compress all of these together a little bit to make them kind of glue them together, make them sound a little more cohesive, you could then put like a little bit of compression on here. So a lot of times I'll have compression on the individual tracks, but then I'll also put a little bit on here. And that's just because this one is being used to glue them all together. This one's being used to bring them all, you know, to, to work on each one individually, if that makes sense. Cool. So then another thing to keep in mind or another tip that I have, I guess, while working with this type of a system is that I like to, towards the beginning of the process, I'll solo all these tracks and kind of 
mix them all relative to each other so that you know they sound good like the balance is good like let's say this is all one explosion sound i would want to make sure that the balance is good for all the different uh aspects of that explosion sound or you know in the example of drums i want to make sure that everything's balanced nicely with each other right so i will mix all these relative to each other while they are all soloed so i get them sounding good by themselves and then what i'll do is then i'll unsolo these and mix them back in with the rest of the piece, right? And so usually I'll go through like one chunk at a time and kind of get it where I want it to sound individually and then I'll like stick it all together by, by listening to everything at once. And so when I'm then listening to everything at once, sometimes I'll tweak the individual tracks, but a lot of times I will then just add uh, things to the aux tracks, right? So I'll mess with the fader or add effects or whatever it is that I'm doing, you know, automation, whatever it is. So that's something to keep in mind. But when you're doing that, you could highlight all the tracks. You can do option shift and click to solo all of them. Or you could also use these groups that we made earlier. So if I highlight this, I clicked on it to highlight it to make it active. I can then just click. I don't have to have a modifier key, right? Because when things are grouped together, a lot of the the features that we can control here, the, the parameters, they will move as a group while the group is highlighted. So I'll use that a lot, that group feature. But yeah, that's kind of it. That's one of the ways I stay organized. That's kind of the approach that I have if I'm given an existing session. That's like my initial approach to organizing the session, to getting things in order. I'll also kind of do like low to high here. Like I didn't really label these properly for how I would actually do it. So I'd probably have the lower track, like these last few tracks would probably actually be the main vocals. And then the backing vocals would probably be these ones. And then so on down until like bass and drums would be the last few, the last couple of uh, options here. So I do have some conventions with that. I know a lot of guys have specific colors that they'll use for different types of instruments as well. I haven't gotten to that point. I kind of just pick a color and go. I probably should pick the same color every time and get like a habit of it because that probably speeds things up a little bit better. Just knowing like on a subconscious level, even if it's on a subconscious level, just knowing that that color is always that instrument must be kind of helpful. But um, I haven't gotten to that stage yet. I guess let me know if you're at that stage. Yeah, so that's my story. I also don't like having a second chunk of inserts here if I'm not using them. So there's that. Yeah, and then when I have my templates, a lot of times my templates will start out with a master fader and maybe like a, a chunk of aux tracks to then be paired up with whatever it is. But yeah, all my templates start with a master fader and then I have like a set of plugins that are always just, they start out as bypass, but they're on the master fader because there are a few plugins that I tend to use on like almost every master fader. So if you wanna hear about that, let me know. I guess I could make a video about what I tend to put on my master fader at some point. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this was long enough to count as a full episode for you guys. So I guess for today's question, I want to know how do you stay organized with your sessions? So let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for ways to improve my process and my flow and everything like that. So. So yeah, if you like this channel, if you like the videos that I'm doing, if you're finding them helpful or interesting or anything, just please let your friends know about it. You know, I, I could use more views on the channel if I'm going to keep doing this. So uh, let your friends know. I have a Patreon as well that'll be in the description below. Otherwise, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. I'll come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for watching, guys. okay and then excuse me that's that's it i'm done